Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Puddles, and this is part 21 on my encounter building series. Uh, today we are going to be going into damage dealers and how to challenge them. If you've got some people that are just like one-shotting creatures that you thought would be a real challenge or are just like outlasting them in a fight, uh, this is how we're going to talk about it, how we can challenge them. Uh, because if you have creatures that die quickly, it's not very fun. Um, well, if they're dying quickly all the time, it can, it can be fun sometimes. But basically, let's just jump into it so I can tell you. So, first, we have our explosive damage dealers. What I mean by that is creatures that do single target damage and just like blow something up. They do a ridiculous amount of damage in one round. Examples, rogues. They have sneak attack. If they crit, uh, like your assassins with their crit, they can do a crazy amount of damage. Paladins, they have smite. If they attack twice and blow two second level smites, they do a crazy amount of damage. Uh, and the third one, which is probably lesser than the first two, is your fighters. They have action surge, so they get two actions in one round. So these three examples can dish out an insane amount of damage in one round of combat. And if that is what they're doing on the first round of the combat, they can... They can literally like kill your like big bad evil guy in one round, which is not what you want. You want your fight to be longer and you want your big bad guy to actually get to do something. Uh, so what can we do to stop this? Well, creatures with high AC. Um, if you have 22 AC, it's pretty hard to hit. Uh, and if your assassin wants to get sneak attack off, they have to hit first. If your paladin wants to get their smite in, they have to hit first and your fighter has to hit to uh, do damage. So it totally makes sense that a high AC creature would be harder for these guys to kill. Uh, you can also do things like targeted spells that increase your shield. So if, if a caster or a creature has a, like the shield spell, which gives them five AC, maybe they, they don't use that until the paladin tries to hit them. There's also like a parry uh, ability. Maybe they save those abilities for the paladin who they know is going to put their smite into them. Um, alternatively, uh, or even with high AC, you can have creatures with high HP. So if your paladin can do 100 hit points in a round, give your creature 200 hit points. Just up the hit points. Like if, if you have, if you are creating combats uh, that are like, following what the monster manual and the dmg say and your players are killing them in one round just give everything more hit points that's fine to do you don't have to follow what the book says if your players are stronger than what the book recommends it's okay just do that um another thing you can do is have longer bigger combats with lots of different creatures so yes your assassin might kill something with the first round but then there's another 10 of those things that they have to deal with uh, but just watch out for action economy, uh, things like that. But yeah, if, if you put everything into one creature and it's dead and there's only one creature there, then the fight is over. So it would make sense to have bigger combats to uh, deal with your explosive damage dealers. Um, have creatures with resistance and immunities. If your paladin is doing radiant damage with his smite, have resistant or immunity to said damage. Or have it immune to poison if your assassin is doing poison damage. Or bludgeoning if your fighter has a big maul and they attack four times with. Uh, you can do that to mitigate the amount of damage that they can do. Uh, make sneaking dangerous and difficult. Or have that so that creatures can't be surprised. So if, if your rogue is sneaking up at the start of every single combat and one-shotting something to start off, just make it so that they can't do that have a creature see them and attack them just like you they don't have to get what they want every single time even if they roll high or, or just have a creature that has crazy perception or just um sees everything or even like a, a, a wizard who's been watching the party the whole time and when they're trying to sneak up they set off a trap or something like that you can you can do these things you can totally do anything you want you are the dm um you can limit resources, uh, burn through smite slots, uh, burn through action surges. Again, this is a recurring theme. Um, so that your creatures don't have the smites or the action surges in the fights to use. 
Uh, it's a little harder with uh, rogues because they always have their sneak attack, but, you know, there's only so much that you can do. Uh, have creatures with high initiative. That seems pretty straightforward. If your players are killing everything one shot, at least give it one turn before they get their go. <laughs> uh, obviously, that's dependent on dice and things like that. Perhaps you can think about a different way of doing initiative so that creatures actually get a go. Um, and lastly, kill them before they kill you. If your creatures know that there's a really dangerous player, well, they would want to kill that person first. If there is an assassin that they know can like one shot the the mage in the back, they would totally try kill that person first. So you can you can like do an explosive damage off and see who can kill uh, whoever first. But these are things to deal with your explosive damage dealers. Now we have your sustain damage dealers. So. Sustained damage dealers are like your barbarians, your monks, your fighters, when they don't have action surge. Um, and they they just consistently do damage. Uh, they just attack each time and they don't have the crazy explosion damage that the others do, but they, they can sustain over a fight for longer. Um, so how, how do we deal with this? Uh, you give creatures high AC and high HP. That's one way to uh, make a, a fight go longer and harder for your characters to kill them. Uh, instead of doing like a big combat, do shorter, smaller combats with explosive creature damage. So if your your barbarian can just sit there and take damage all day and swing, have something hit them really, really hard just once though, and then your barbarian kills that one thing. Like, it, that'll be way scarier for a Barbarian than them, like, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with an Orc who does, like, 10 damage each round. If you do something that goes in and, like, it's like a glass cannon, does, like, ridiculous amounts of damage but then dies, that'd be way more interesting and challenging for that player. Um, you Again, you can have creatures with resistance and immunities to uh, make it so that the sustained damage is less. I think that is more effective in your sustained damage dealers than your explosive ones having resistances uh, because obviously it is over a longer time. Uh, fight fire with fire. Have creatures that have crazy sustain that have really high hit points, high AC, and can do damage over a long period of time. Um, another thing you can do is like these creatures are good for like round after round after round. If you do like lockdown spells, you can just take them out of the fight so that they're not actually being useful. Uh, obviously, you don't want that to happen for the whole fight, but if you take them out of the round for a couple of uh, rounds, then they're not using their abilities uh, and they're not being effective. Uh, you can also grapple and restrain, make them use their action to escape, uh, which is like if, if they're not doing the, the attacks in their turn, then they're not being as useful. Um, you can charm them as well, which is a, a, a favorite of mine, and get them to kill their allies. So if you've got a barbarian or a monk who is like just kicking ass and is just always consistent, always does like maximum damage in your party, you can just charm them and make them kill their their allies. Like, why wouldn't they do that? Um, and if you've got a, a mage, why wouldn't they charm the, the strongest of the party to attack the other? Um, yeah, and then lastly, you can uh, you can just not target them. If if you've got a party and there is one really strong character or one character that just sustains and and is like the rock that just stands there and takes all the damage and does all the damage and is just in the middle of everything, just have your creatures ignore them. You can attack the squishies first. You can attack the healer. You can go into the trees and kill the ranger before you go and attack the monk or the barbarian. Like, and if you were an intelligent creature, that's something that you might do. You might uh, have a strategy of like locking them down and, and restraining them while the rest of your minions go forth and kill the rest of the party. That's totally something that you can do. Um, but yeah, that's that. Uh, again, disclaimer, this is not something I would recommend doing all the time. You want to vary up your combats and you don't want to just target one player and have them feel bad because you are making them not as useful as they normally would be. But if you do want to challenge a player, these are things that you can do. 
And I hope it's been helpful. And I hope you have enjoyed. And thanks.